Alrighty, there we are. There we are. Okay. So, are we both on shot? Yeah, we're both framed. Both in, in good frames. We God damn it, Beaver, we're on top of it. Let's just get this thing going. We got a good stance going here. Is oh, do uh, you mind uh, shutting down? Oh yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. I, that's the one thing I'm supposed yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Jane. Hey, Jane. You came just in time. We just we're just going live. We are literally just starting. Uh, I'm pouring it into a cup. So, so far, I do not know. What is it? Whip frosting. It, they've D. done a very good job of artistically on the can. Like, that's a heavy intro on the can. To, uh, like, if I was... I like it. It's very good. Like, if I was going... Flying like that, monkeys. I would and hit you in the face in the yeah, store. Right? Yeah. Free plug for the flying monkeys. You get one, one for free. You gotta send us money. Frosting mint, mint hazy IPA. Yeah, you gotta be. Mm, it is a bit. It, it, it the first one was better. It was the one that had uh, the oranges on it. Yeah, yeah. It, it, that one was better. This one here has a little bit of that. At the end, you want to like. Do your the maybe after thing. the whole beer you might be like yeah I think I'll like I think I'll lean into it yeah, yeah. but these are sippers eh they're not they're they're the ones that are like they're eating a sandwich well and you're not drinking multiples of one kind right you're going one to the next so it's that's yeah, where yeah. it's gonna kind of change you yeah oh yeah I just my palate just got got adjusted that other one yeah exactly yeah if I started with this one I might like this one better yeah yeah you're right beef we're going no hats today. Yeah, because our hair both we had we're both having good hair days. I think. <laughs> yeah. I think. <laughs> we're going for, or maybe mad, we're going for mad scientists. We think if yeah. we're, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a real intimate one on one with me and Beaver Jane. You're missing yeah. out on well, on the live. My live hair one. looks like a fucking Q-tip, the end of a Q-tip. Love it. Yeah, but the girls like when they when when he rubs it on their privates. <laughs> yeah. Hey Jane, did you ever? Did you ever fart in a... Oh, yeah, this a, is a question. You ever fart in a bathtub and have the bubbles go up in your privates and have it feel real nice? That's what we thought originally. Apparently, people are... They love it. <laughs> That's a thing, eh? Girls say they lie in the tub and fart in the tub, and then the, the fart bubbles. bubbles tickle their, like, labia, and then and their clit all on the way up to the surface. Lovely. And they say... Good for them. Or they'll fart in their pants and it'll go in their vagina. Like the bubble will go into the vagina. Like fart bubble. Right in. I didn't even think that was possible. Yeah. I never don't. ever had that. No. Like they're obviously wearing. Never even heard of it, right? Neither have I. Up until an hour ago, I had never heard of it either. No, but it's on the wheel. <laughs> yeah. Fart in your pussy. It's right yeah. there. <laughs> well, you're missing out on a great show, my love. And say, but thank you for the meat tray. Yes. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, Maybe you, you can like. listen later on. Yes, I will. We're okay. going to really dive deep into the end of the chronicles of uh, pussy farting. <laughs> or or uh, fart pussy, fart, fart pussying. It's all the little details. Yeah, fart pussying. I didn't even think that would like that doesn't even sound right. <laughs> no, it's really weird. Man. It's weird. It should be pussy fart. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, one I get. Yeah, that one I get. Yeah, the hey. the pleasures of other people, eh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Anyways, guys, this is an educational program. Beaver and I are going to carry the weight of all the disappointments who usually are on this program with us but there's only one way to start to start this program and we love how we start this program it's with a thing that we call the theme song the theme song Talents. He's multitasking like a motherfucker tonight. 
He's uh, two time. Good time. Two time. President Club Award winner. Man of the Hour, Pete Van Dyke. Hey. Oh, thank you, Pete. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, audience. There and thank you, Beaver. They appreciate you. Uh, Pete, I'm feeling real talkative tonight. Well, you have to be talkative, Beaver, because you're carrying the weight. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you and welcome to episode 438 here in the Pine Grove Pool Shed. Uh, uh, this is going to be a very intimate show. You notice we're on a two shot tonight and we're going to be on this two shot the entire night because there's only one guy with me tonight because the other one's fucked up. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome the co-host to our show, Derek the Beaver Van Hooten, everyone. Yeah. Oh, crap. No, it's all right. Silence is uh, a virtue. There we go. There we go. The audience is. They bad. were a little unsure of me, which is okay. I'll win them over by the end of the show. You will be there. I hope so. I hope so. Now, uh, maybe a little bit of pause is due to the fact that I am uh, not only hosting this program, but I'm also directing because uh, our regular director, Johnny Renton, is uh, doing nothing. So you'll see is not here. He bailed. He said he would. We are doing it on Tuesday because that's the night Johnny could do it. And Kevin said, ah, if I'm going to do it at all, I'll do it Tuesday. Both of them no show tonight. No shows. Me and Beaver gonna carry the weight and uh that's which is okay a, which is cool man yeah. that's what we do this is no big deal we got the wheel with us tonight we don't even need robot dave we just got the us two cats and we're gonna keep this show going for Fuck it. uh johnny my favorite word of the show no excuse at all no none excuse. just saying not gonna make it don't think i'm gonna make it don't think you're gonna make it means you're not gonna make it and you didn't make it so you knew you were gonna make it i'm not gonna make it but no excuse no answer. Johnny, you're a dear friend of mine, but I got to follow Pete's footsteps in this one. All I'm saying is no punishment here, but I'm saying I'm actually thinking it might be the right decision. Johnny knows his body. Yeah. And what that guy does is he rides it hard. He likes to yeah. push it to its limits. You know what? He might just need a nice time out. He, maybe he, right now yep. he's sitting at home watching. He Guess what he's not watching? He's not watching the Lightning lose the game. <laughs> oh. Oh, maybe that's why he, he's he, not here. He's, he's sitting in his sorrows having a nice cheesecake. And, uh, Ooh, I bet you that is what he is doing. Bet, and you know what? He's probably enjoying it. And I would do if I were him. He's sitting there. He probably had another one of those showers. He had one last week and he's like, wouldn't this be nice if I had the same thing, a shower? And then got to just like sit around eating cheesecake and watching like, uh, Mer the new American Idol or whatever. Yeah. Or whatever he's into. Johnny's probably an American Idol. I bet you he, does, he likes it. Oh, yeah. He's he, also into, I bet you, Law and Order. Oh, he also likes German uh, shit porn. German shit porn, eh? Yeah, he likes one. That's very specific. Well, it's the only people that are gross enough to make that. Are the Germans, yeah, I so. can imagine. So it's like kind of redundant to say it, German <laughs> shit porn. You know, it's like you could just say shit porn. You'd know where that's coming from. Right. That's only going to be... The Germans. The, the Germans. The Germans. That's all I can think of. Because that's gross. Taking a poop on someone. Yeah, that is. That is. Wow. Yeah. I, I can't even describe it. Like, that's disturbing. To me, it's like something bad happened in your life if that's what you get turned on by. Yeah. Like, it's one thing to do anal because it's in and nothing's coming out. Yeah. And I'll tell you something. If a girl's kind enough to. Maybe something's coming out, but. At the end. Yeah. If a girl's kind enough to allow me to do things in that area and something happens to come out, uh, you know, like that's just the cost of doing business. Yeah. it's it, they, That's how they develop the term uh, shit happens, right? Exactly, man. Yeah. You're going to get no judgment from this fellow right None. Here. None whatsoever. You, you're better gonna get... you better hope you don't get poop in your dick hole. Yeah. You know, and that's the risk I take. Yeah. You know, if I'm going to do something like that, then that's the risk I take. Yep. But, you know, if we're going to be playing butthole games, then you assume certain risks, and that's what you do. You know, that's that's, that's how life works. Baby. That's how life works. There's risks to everything. Yeah. Like, you want the pleasures of the butthole, you get the pink eyes of the butthole. That's right. how it works. Yes. There's consequences to every pleasure. Exactly. You want uh, anything good, you got to pay a price, you know? Yeah, you can pay a price in the normal hole, right? Potentially. Yeah, right. If you go, If you go risky business, right? Yeah, if you go risky business, mm -hmm. if you go just standard uh, fair, 
it, it tends to get mundane. Yes. Perhaps, you know? Per- perhaps. Not to use too many big words on this program, but you know what I'm talking about, you know? Yeah, never been. So there's always a cost, you know? Yeah. If I'm out there tomcatting around town, sticking my dick in a- everything that moves, now I have... Uh, probably had a few diseases probably i've had to get a few q-tips up my pee hole you know to see if i got that's the one clap. thing that's one i like i've been tested many times in my life and uh it's one thing i've never gotten is a disease have you ever had the q-tip in the pee hole though to check if you got a disease uh no i've the blood sampling oh yeah but you ever so you I'm never like, like bang this. someone that has a clap like scrape the scrotum like they or goes in the pee hole yeah i know and that's the painful one yeah yeah, the chlamydia. Yeah. They check it for chlamydia. Yeah, they can do that with a blood sample, too. They can do that? Yeah. Uh, and a urine sample. Because, like, uh, I remember when I was younger, like, if someone got the clap, like, one of my friends, like, were banging someone, and then they got the, cl- like, the person they were banging got the clap, mm-hmm. and then they'd call you, and they'd say, like, uh, I got the clap, you better get checked out, you know? Mm-hmm. And then uh, they'd have to go, and then it always involved a Q-tip up the pee hole. Oh. Yeah, no, I, I, I've done a pee test before for chlamydia. Yeah, no, I've never, ha- I've never got anything. But I've never got anything. No, clean as a whistle. I am a clean Dutchman. That's good. I'm obviously clean. I've and, never had anything. And since I married my wife, I've only been with my wife. So, you know what? There's no getting anything anymore. With- yeah, but unless unless our wives are are, are Tom Cat right, around, right? And then we get it. Oh, that's the worst. That's soap opera bad stuff, man. Yeah, that's that that's uh, days of our life stuff right there. I all of a sudden get like herpes and I'm like, man, I was so good my whole life. And now you've got something that's going to last forever. And now I got herpes because, because like some, because like my, uh, you know, the person I was devoted to like decided that she was going to bang a herpes ridden, ride a herpes ridden <laughs> cock or something one day. Ride the nasty train. Man, that would be just a tough pill to swallow. That'd be a tough pill to swallow. You're damn right. There's no forgetting, that's for sure. <laughs> no, there is no forgetting. You gotta like or wear that around. It's you like you can forgive, but you definitely won't forget it. But luckily there's enough people with herpes now that uh you can just build a community of people that are just cool with it. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. probably it's probably like the way <laughs> this day and age the amount of diseases going around, it's there's 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 communities for everything, right? It's yeah, no, it's, it's no longer just AA. It's like uh I bet you uh, you can't get herpes twice, can you? I don't know. But you can't get... It's like, if you already got it, then what's the point of get... You can't get it again. Right. It's like AIDS if, or HIV, you know? If you're already <laughs> HIV positive, you bang someone that's HIV positive. Unless you go straight bore AIDS after. I don't know. You can't get... get but there are... If you, if, if you got you HIV and then, and then you bang someone with, also, with AIDS... Who has full blown AIDS? It's yeah. not gonna. You can't catch their full blown AIDS. Your HIV it's, still got to progr- turn in. Yeah, it's got to progress. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's still like I think that's your. You you can all, you, you can't get pregnant twice. You know. Yeah. See, I'm a dummy when it comes to that kind of stuff. So. Like if all of a sudden, like let's say I'm not fertile anymore, I'm vasectomied. But like if I was fertile, yeah, and uh, a pregnant woman, like and single, I'd be fertile and single in this situation. Okay. So I'm fertile and single. Yeah, and a, a pregnant lady comes up to me and it's just like, uh, you know, like I, uh, I uh, wanted to have a baby, and uh, but I so I got like a, a sperm donor. Yeah, and I'm gonna raise it by my uh, by myself. Mm-hmm. But I'm like uh, eight months pregnant, super horny. I just want someone to bust loads into me mm-hmm. that maybe I'll like get a. Get the, or maybe she's like nine months pregnant, you know, mm-hmm. and then she just wants someone to dump loads into her so that maybe it'll get the pregnancy started, you know, mm-hmm. would you do that as a favor? You know what? It, it, you're not, you're single. Depending and, on the circumstance, that would be pretty cool. I think it'd be awesome. Opportunity. I think it'd be awesome. Like when my wife was pregnant, that's all I wanted to do was bang her. Oh, I love pregnant women, eh? Yeah. But well, I love my wife pregnant. Well, yeah, of, of course, and I do too. But if you think of it from a uh, like a biological standpoint, yeah, uh, the most attractive woman, if if we were attracted to people because of mating, yeah. right, like because you want to look for a suitable mate, mm-hmm. right, that's the idea behind. Uh, then you'd want to find someone that was uh, 
Oh shit! What were we just talking about? I just blanked again. Pregnant lady. Yeah. And then what single. could be more like feminine and attractive than a woman that like what? Because you want to look for signs that a woman's like going to be a good mate. You want to look for like birthing hips. You know, you want to look for like you know the things that big boobs to feed. You know, and those sorts of things. And then, uh, so what could be more feminine than an already pregnant woman? You know, she's going to be able to have babies because she's already got a baby in her, right? Right. So if you're attracted to people for the purpose of having babies. That would be the most attractive. That would be the most attractive. Yeah, number one. Yeah. Yeah, That's what I think. That's always a a long way of going about it. But thank you. That's what I was pointing I was trying to make. And I think it's it's sexy as heck. Just the whole deal. The whole deal. I loved it when my wife got pregnant, man. It was just terrific. It was like watching something like that you didn't even, couldn't even comprehend in your head, you know? Mm -hmm. Like their whole body changes, their whole body changes. And life grows inside them, you know? Yeah. Their organs shift, you know, to make room for the baby, you know? And and they don't even go back to the same place when they're done, you know? No. And then... uh, like everything changes. The nipples, like as soon as my wife got pregnant, her nipples were different, you know? Yeah, I can agree cool. with that. It I was, can agree, yeah. It was like immediately you're like, well, those are different. There, there's something different about them. And then they become different. They're not boobs Did anymore. you take a picture before? You know how when they're there? I wish, man. I, I took a picture in my head and I still have it in my head. I, I took a picture. The pre, you took a picture of your wife's boobs? Yeah. I That's such a smart move, Beef. Such a smart move. I can't believe she agreed to it. Like, man, oh man, this- what's that in a shoebox in your house? No, it's in my phone. Oh my god, am I ever gonna? Ha- am I ever gonna try to <laughs> hack figure out <laughs> figure out what your password is over your shoulder one day? I'm just gonna be in there. I'm like, God I damn, where I, is it? I couldn't believe I got it because uh, the the pre pre the pre kid Julie Boo picture is in your phone right now. Yeah, like <laughs> god day, damn it, you like day, it to be- me. like day before, <laughs> day before, and you never even like. That's crazy, Beef. That's crazy. Yeah. It's such, you know, there's going to be a day, I bet you, like 20 years from now. How old are you now? I'm th- 37. So, like, you'll be 57 and I'll be, like, almost uh, fucking dead. <laughs> what am I now? Almost 50, so I'll be almost 70. I'll show you then. And your wife's going to be, how old is she? She's a year younger than me, 36. So, she's going to be the same thing, like... She, well, so she'll be in 20 years, she'll, she'll be, be 56, 56 yeah. right? Okay, at 56, I think your wife would gladly allow it. Allow you to show the pre kids boobs of Julie, and I would be able to look at it and uh, be as dirty as I wanted because she it would make her feel nice. Do you think that's probably accurate? Like if you, think I'd say ninety percent because you never know about the ten, right? You never know about yeah, 10%. maybe not, maybe not even twenty years because fifty six is still she could still be pretty hot at fifty six, but at like maybe like seventy six. But then I'd have to. <laughs> you're gonna, you're gonna be, you're gonna be borderline. Yeah, fucking, I'll be pushing. Daisy, <laughs> I w- I hope. No, I'll, I got, I'll be hope one but there'll day. be an, a late a time though where she's gonna be like really happy. She'll be like, I can't believe there's a picture of my tits out there, right? And like everyone's gonna be like, Oh, mom, you're just an old lady, and she'll be like, yeah, yeah, you don't know about me. You don't know. And then uh, she's like, Your dad's got a picture on his phone. <laughs> <He's> gone through <laughs> eighteen updates. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> gone through many updates. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, anyway. yeah I've never got a nude from my wife ever in my life. And then I, but I got that picture. I've never, there's never been, and I'm, this is the truth. And my wife would be happy for me to share this publicly. There's never been a picture or a video or anything of my wife in any sort of the buff. Yeah, me neither. In my whole life. Well, it's not you. Your wife's got boobs. So I let you take a picture of her boobs for the phone. Yeah, but that was in a, in a pre, that was almost in a medical situation the way she looked at it, I think. It's such a smart move, though. Yeah. I have a look at these puppies beforehand. <laughs> so you have a... It was Whoever all, gave her that advice is smart. Is a smart lady. Well, yeah. I almost want to... You know how sometimes people will talk... Like, they'll say things around your, your cell phone, and the next thing you know, it becomes a search. Mm-hmm. Like, I almost want to say, like, dirty things into my wife's cell phone. Just, oh, yeah, just yeah. so it comes up as, like, ads and fucking... <laughs> you know how, like, when, pe- when like, guys will go up to their wife's phone and talk, start talking about, like, gifts they want? Like shit, like yeah, golf clubs and vacation. I never thought about this. Oh yeah, you just got to talk about it. 
around your wife's phone. Man, the other day I was in the fucking, I was in Norfolk tractor looking at a chainsaw and a weed whacker. And the lady's like, instead of buying a still, I would suggest for the same quality and less price, I would suggest an echo. I'm like, all right, whatever I'm looking. And we, she gives us the pamphlet, but I leave. Not an hour later, the ad, the next ad on my f- Facebook was of Echo uh, gardening tools. Yes, I know. It's sometimes very quick. It's quick, man. Like, and was, they so you think stupid? if I went to my wife's phone and I just whispered into it, like, uh, like uh, dirty um, sex positions, next- or or how about this? How about, like I just whispered into it, like, uh, hey, uh, um, like there's a lot of shitty husbands out there. Um, um, so I'm really, you, you're really lucky to have a good one. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know? And then you'll, she'll get like memes and shit. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. And they go like, oh man. Husband of the year. Appreciate your husband. Yeah. Oh yeah. I appreciate my husband. Boy, oh boy. My husband's a great guy. Yeah. If I did that in her phone, would the phone kind of spread that shit to her? No, know? man. It definitely, man. Cause I, I've tested it out on my phone and it, this scenario. Like oh. after a snare, I said a couple of like, I just start like even like uh, uh, farming equipment. If I'm searching that online, because that's what I do all day. Yeah. Like that's what I'm my day to day is farming. So I'm looking, I'm looking at a piece of equipment. Well, next thing you jerk off to a spring too. <laughs> <laughs> next thing you know, it's a fucking in my in, in, in an ad on my Facebook. Like fuck. right, right. Like it don't make sense. Well, my, what I am what I don't understand is that my algorithm's not as good as other people's. Like sometimes it's obvious. Like you well, said, we, we, we've had uh, we've had an episode about this because mine. Like all of a sudden, I'll get like um, I get a lot of like uh, date dating Asian women or like buying a Ukrainian uh, uh, bride or something like that. Well, you maybe know? you have some uh, some interesting uh, porn searches, I guess. <laughs> but I don't. That's the thing. No, I, it's it, just generic. It, yeah, it's not even in consideration with my porn searches. Like it's like I don't. I'm not. I don't. They're not my interests. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it's like the opposite. Yeah, and I'm kind of already married too. Like it's like I'm not looking for buying a wife online. Yeah, you're not or, looking for a mail order. You know, and like that's what's coming up on my YouTube things. It's like that and uh see my instagram searches are exactly usually what i'm thinking in my head hey you see that commercial with that girl with the mustache keep going she's like uh she's like a young high school girl or something she got a mustache and then she's sad about it but then she starts looking at pictures of cool people with mustaches (laughs) and then uh, she sees a freddie mercury one and then she goes it's an amazon ad i think and then she goes on and she gets like a Freddie Mercury jacket on Amazon and she walks into high school with her mustache and a Freddie Mercury jacket. Really? She's like rocking it, you know? Mm-hmm. And then, uh, you ever seen that ad? No. It's on all the time. I thought you'd see it with hockey or something like that. No. But God damn it. Well, at least it's not putting something to my head right now. Like I've spent, I'm doing a lot of listening to the radio lately because I'm on, in the tractor. So I want to bring up that. Not, uh, I'll bring up that uh, maybe after the show. Right? Okay. I don't have to prep. I haven't been watching a lot of videos or TV much of late. It's a lot of late nights. So I just want you. To, I just wanted to get your opinion of the mustache girl. The mustache girl. So the mustache. Let's girl. say you got a girl. She's gorgeous. Let's say like she's beautiful, right? Yeah, but she's got a little bit of hair on her upper lip. She's got a dark mustache. Yeah, <laughs> and and you're like, uh, and everything about her is terrific. But she just got this little, you know, very noticeable mustache. Um, but she's otherwise gorgeous. So what would you do, Beef? That's a tough one. And our personality is great. And it's a natural thing. It's not something they could avoid. I think there's a lot of women out there that shave their mustache. Yeah, I think they do. Yeah. But what if they let it? What if they just oh, like said, this is how I look? Are you looking up the ad? Yeah, I see it. I see the broad. She's not like gorgeous, no. right? but she's a pretty girl or whatever, you yeah, know? Yeah, but she's got a mustache. That's a, see that kind of mustache? Yeah. And then she put the, she put the yellow jacket on. Yeah, yeah, that's the girl, right? Yeah. So, like, a girl like that, she's got that mustache, but it's like she's still a hot girl, right? Yeah, that's a tough one. That that can always be fixed. That can always be fixed. Yeah, you can take the mustache off, but I'm saying this girl's keeping it on because she yeah, owns she's em- it. She's embracing it. You like the girl's personality. You like the girl's looks, except you you don't like her mustache. I think you got to take it in the moment. Like, as in, you'll know in the moment, and that's the only way you'll know because... 
Like you'll be able to look past her. You won't be able to look past. Well, yes, it'll either be a good, really good or really bad. Like I honestly think it's all about in the moment, right? Yeah. Because if they, like, even if they can, like, it's all about connection, right? You know, right away. Yeah. Yeah. But like, imagine if your friend like brings this girl, like and he's in got, love with her, and then but you're looking at her like, oh my oh, god, there's another thing. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Another scenario. Do you mention it to your buddy? Yeah, he's just like, oh my god, she's just the best. She's I beautiful. Bet you she's like, perfect. She's my dream girl. And you're like, all my buddies are gonna be making fun of her mustache behind my back. Like every single one of them. Yeah. So I gotta like be like, okay, guys. I, I, I know. know my girlfriend's got a mustache, and but she likes it. And she's owned it. Yeah. She's just, it's like who she is. She grows this thing. If you want to call her Burt Rounds behind her back, you call her Burt Rounds behind her back. <laughs> but I am good. I love it. I love it. I love her. Mm. And it and uh, I don't mind it. It tickles us when we, it tickles when we kiss. Yeah. You know, like I would just be like, I, you know, I would own it. See, and I'd be I- like, you can't make fun of my wife. Uh, and like, I, I know what's going on. Go ahead and make fun of her. But like, she's a charming woman and what you're doing is you're you're boiling her down to one single attribute and i right. don't appreciate it right because i didn't i didn't marry my wife because of just because of the way she looks that was not the, no that was not the first thing if that, you do that you're you're gonna have a fucking terrible life yes can i borrow one yeah. with the bum of light do you want the pink one to permanently, pink one, please, permanently yes. stay over there yes thank you but yeah no that can't be the reason that, if you get married because you think the person's hot worst thing you could ever do yeah then your marriage will last as long as they're hot which isn't very long it isn't very long <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, no even if they remain hot to everyone else in the world to you they're going to eventually become the thing you see all the time right and no matter how hot that is it becomes a thing you see every time you know you can't see it objectively anymore well and you when you a public perception of hot is 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 five percent of the time yeah, like my wife to me is is hot. Same here. And uh, but like I know that like, um, like, uh, like in fifty years or something like that, she's still gonna be hot to me. But to the rest of the public, she's not gonna be right. Like you know what I mean? It can't be the. It, it's got to be one of the last reasons you're with somebody. Yeah, like, cause, uh, like, I'm not, yeah, that, that beauty's fleeting. Yeah. You number, have to marry not, a person, or you have to like a person because of the, of the person, you know? About number seven or eight on the scale of, of necessities. There's so many, and the yeah. ones below it are way, are like hugely important. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah. like, like looks are like, like I said, it's about 5%. I think I honestly, um, a successful marriage is like a successful business. Like, and you have to have a grind, a business partner that's willing to work with you and grind it. Yeah. And it's hard work. They both have to put the same in that the same effort in that the other one is. Oh, I always say the hardest thing I'll ever do in my life is, is, is to be married. It's, it's like the, literally the hardest thing I do. It's really hard because you're both changing all the time and you're both different people and right. constantly changing. And you're saying yet through all this change, we're going to like still be committed to one another. That's fucking hard to do. Yeah. And, and, and perception of each other and opinions. Yeah. Um, so, well, so Pete, let's hear about this wheel here. You got behind us. Let's, uh, what do you, what do you got on there? Oh, this wheel? Yeah. Uh, I, I'm really liking uh, what I see here. Well, on the wheel today, we also we have Fire in Your Pussy, which uh, we already talked about. Last week we had, um, what do we have? Less. It was uh, uh, Want Less. Want Less. This week we have Think Less. We have Boob Size by Country. I like that. Would you try to guess who's got the biggest boobs in the world? Chat GPT, which is a big subject. Women control cultures made it two weeks in a row. Minimum swearing age made it again. Weird pastimes from history. Oh. And fart in your pussy again. So that's our wheel. Now uh, you want to give it a go? Let's just yeah, see. Yeah, we'll give it a go. Let's give it a go. Oh, you almost got it. Oh, weird pastimes in history. Weird pastimes. All right. Yeah. Well, this was. It, this is just going to be me and you. Mm-hmm. And uh, so what I'm going to do is, most of these are going to be pretty easy, but 
uh, I want to uh, explain some weird pastimes in history. You try to guess where it happened. Okay. And uh, so this is like to set this up. Um, you know, before there was TV and the internet, yeah, uh, people had to just like do s- stupid shit, right? To uh, pass the time and enter- entertain themselves, yeah, you know? like kind of like the Amish have to do now, uh, yeah. And uh, so there's some really weird shit through history. So I'm just going to name some stuff. Some of it's only happened in the past. Some of it still happens today. And you just got to try to guess where in the world. Okay. Okay. So the first one is uh, who would set out picnics to watch a, a, a war battle? Wow. That's quite the scenario. This would be in the 1800s. Set out a picnic to watch a war battle. Well, that strikes me as like a German thing. Oh, good guess. Cause, but uh, no, in this case, it's the Americans. Really? During the Civil War, they would go out and have a picnic while their, uh, a lot of times their neighbors and stuff were getting butchered and cannons shot at oh, them. Oh, yeah. You know? So kind of like gangs in New York. But they would go and just have a little picnic from the top of a hill and watch the the battle. The battle go on. Okay. Yeah. That's America. That's that's as about as American as it comes. Yeah, you're right. Mm. Okay, in the 19th century, which is like again the 1800s, which country was one of the most popular pastimes visiting the morgue? Wow, visiting the morgue. That was a th- thing. Yeah, it all started because there was a girl who died just from like a bruise on her finger. And then uh, they wrote about it in the paper, and then everyone went to the morgue to see the girl's body. Because they didn't believe it, probably. Yeah, and then... Uh, that strikes me as a European thing. Yes, it is in Europe. Yeah. Um, is it like a British thing? Well, I'm going to give you a couple of hints. Morgue is very macabre. Uh, morgue. Parlez-vous, Morgue? Oh, yeah, uh, like in Paris. Uh, yeah, it's French. It's Parisian. French. It actually was the Parisians uh, uh, in particular. It was in Paris where the one of the most favorite pastimes, if you go to Paris, you got to check out the morgue. Yeah, so where people called... would crowd in front of the windows and watch the look at the dead bodies. So they were calling bullshit on the death, and they were like, no, this can't be. They just like, they just like the like weirdness of seeing mm-hmm. dead people. Mm. To keep on that uh, topic. Topic. Which country would have mummy unwrapping parties? Mummy unwrapping. Oh, that's like a and and they would get they would get these mummies from Egypt. I was going to just say yeah, and then they'd unwrap them and they would get them shipped to their country. What? And then unwrap what time them. of life was that? This is the uh, probably a long time ago. Eighteen hundreds. It would be the eighteen hundreds. Yeah, that's long. Early eighteen hundreds. Yeah. They would unwrap a mummy. Uh, like in Pakistan? No, these are rich Victorian Brits. Really? Yes. Yes, they would... Uh, what would they do after? Oh, look what we found. They would bring the like sarcophagus and they'd unwrap it. And then they would like... The, they would have surgeons and stuff that would like... Like flip back. Oh, the thing. yeah. And they would usually unwrap the mummy and then make fun of its features. Really? Especially like its privates and stuff, you know? Like they would I thought, like mock I them. thought it was more like in the research side of, of, of like medicine that they would. No, just for the peculiarity. Just, for, just for interesting. Just for shits. Okay. Um, That's fucking weird, man. This is like medieval times, uh, but it still actually happens today. Mob football. Mob football. And uh, in this mob football, there was only one rule. No murder. No murder. So it was like... You had to take a ball. It was like the purge, except no death. You could not kill, but you could do anything else. And all you had to do was take this ball and put in the goal. You had to put in the goal three times to get one point. And it goes back and forth. And they still play in one town in this country today. And where they get together and beat the shit out of each other. Really? Yeah. Uh, this one is, uh, yeah. You got to think about like, people that- Like w- in Australia? Oh, good guess. Good guess. But no, they're, it's their parent country, the UK again. Oh, okay. You got to understand these people in the UK drink a lot. They yeah. come up with a lot of drunk ideas. <laughs> That's a drunk idea right there. 
Yeah, I'll give you a couple. I'll give you one more. I'll just say this is them again. There's one place in England that carry a barrel of flaming tar through the streets every year. Yeah. They, they have a, a barrel of tar and mm-hmm. they light it on fire and then they got to like run it through the streets. People like carry it on their head while they got like, like, uh, like hats and shit. Yeah. They carry the bowl of tar. And then they just, as, as, and then when they can't take it anymore, they give it to another guy and he runs it. It's all to celebrate Guy Fox day. You ever heard of Guy Fox? No. He's this British guy who tried to blow up parliament. He was just like a regular guy. Oh. And like he wanted to like blow up parliament. So they tired him and lit him up? Well, like he's, he, he tried to burn it down, but it didn't work. So every year the common people would celebrate what Guy Fox tried to do by oh. lighting big bonfires in the local parks and getting pissed up. They still do it every year. Well, I was just like, going to say that, that, that whole process had to start at a bar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, it's a drunk idea and it's always great. They, some of the bonfires they light in these parks though, are like the biggest fires I've ever seen. Really? Oh yeah, man. There's I got monsters. I had the best time on Guy Fox day when I was in England and I got fucking hammered. And I don't, I think I got alcohol poisoning actually. You can just be a pyromaniac and just light everything up. They have, they have like all the skids that England ever used. Here. <laughs> really? And then it's stacked up higher than like a building. And then they set it all on fire. The flame is like, I can't even believe they do it in a public like, space. And, and people are like see pretty close space. to this giant fire. Really? See yeah. it from space kind of thing. Yeah. It's crazy. But it, it, it was actually a fun time. Whole park's full of drunks. I'm glad you did this. Cause it's like a whole bunch of random facts that I was. Another thing that the Brits do is shin kicking. They Ouch. kick each other in the shin. Ow. But they, they stuff their like uh, pants with straw. So it doesn't hurt as bad. So it doesn't hurt as bad. After about 10 kicks, you're going to fire five kicks. You're going to, the straw is now flat. Yeah. Yeah. What company, what country did, uh, 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 where you could go and, uh, watch a bomb be detonated an atomic bomb. Oh, in like, uh, in Japan or China, like Hiroshima. Nope. And this is also the US of A. No way. Yeah. Las Vegas, Nevada in the the 1950s. You're right. Kennedy had actually said a lot to say, you know, you can't do that anymore because of all the radiation poisoning that (laughs) tourists are getting. Tourists are dying. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, What else? You no longer can allow people to pay money to to kill themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Last one. What country uh, made cheetahs their house pets? Oh, like uh, Saudi Arabia? Ooh, that's a pretty good guess. You're in the right. They do now, anyways. Do they really? Well, they got lions and shit as their fucking. Yeah, I suppose they do, right? Well, this was uh, the Egyptians. Oh fuck, I was close. Yeah, you were not. You were in the right neighborhood. You dropped the cherry. I don't have an ashtray yet. <laughs> oh <laughs> shit, I got two over here. Yeah, you're hogging the trays, buddy. All right, um, that's it for that game. It's weird, eh? Oh. oh, fart in your pussy. Let's do yeah. this one. So, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to probably wonder why it says fart in your pussy. Well, me and Pete just happened to come across an interesting video online. Can you see the screen here in Beef? Uh, yes. This I can. one that's waving up the thing? Yeah. Because I'm going to play the p- part of this for the, uh, the, the viewers here. Let's see if this works. Windows capture. God, there it is. Wait, no, this one. <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, I have to go to this one then. Uh, that one. I need to ask you both a question. Is it true that when you fart sometimes, the fart goes up into your vagina? Yes. Yeah, I kind of like it when that happens. Wait, you know what? But you know what? What? Luke, don't film it! I'm filming me. They don't know who you are. Tell me the truth. When you have a bush, it happens less. <laughs> <laughs> so it feels nice. Yeah, it feels real nice. I, I don't know why it feels nice, but it feels really nice. Sometimes it happens and it'll just ride up. But sometimes it happens and it goes to a spot and it sits there and you're like, wow. Do if I move a certain way, I could keep it there. <laughs> Like a fart bubble yeah. <laughs> in your vagina, yeah. and then you, can you fart if, if you get it out? Does it make a sound? Mm, no, no, I just mostly just. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Do you ever fart up into your dick? No. Oh, I'll tell you when it happens, and it feels really 
good. Okay. When you're in the bathtub and oh, you have a huge fart. Okay. And you're sitting so that the air, all the air comes up the front. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah. In the bath, and you like have a big fart, yeah. multiple bubbles, and the pressure goes all the way up. So even though it's not stuck necessarily in your vagina lips, uh-huh. it's still going in front of your clit. So it's like vibrating your vagina. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, number one, he's laughing because this is the one of the greatest days of his life that he gets to figure this shit out, right? Like, and and Pete, we're I, he, this guy's f- thinking what me and you are both thinking. Like, we had no idea, no idea that girls would sit in a bathtub and like let out a big fart, and as the bubble came up from their butthole, it would it would tickle their vagina lips, as this girl so eloquently put. And yeah. They, uh, and then... And then uh, rub against their clit. Their clit on the way out. It's like lazy masturbation. Good God, man. I, I like farting in the tub. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's fun. It, the, the best part about farting in the tub is the fact that the, when the fart comes out the top, it's concentrated fart. <laughs> right? Yeah. It's like putting it in a jar. Yeah, because there's no air mixed with that fart that comes out. No. So if yeah, I think when that thing comes out, especially if, you, if you're in the tub with your wife or whatever, and you're lying like uh, head to foot or something like that, mm-hmm. you know, that thing will come out right under her nose. Yeah. And then it comes out, breaches the water pure fart pure fart and it just it doesn't have time to mix with the air but yeah. time it gets to her nose so that will will make her gag for sure and that's hilarious you know i've i understand that kind of entertainment value from farting in the tub but uh we never, i never thought i could it could have a pleasurable experience yeah i didn't know they used to they like it is it literally lazy masturbation Yes, kind of, but I mean, God damn it, I'd be eating fucking bean salad before I go to <laughs> have a bath if I was a lady. Well, we always used to say to our wives, you know, oh, geez, like fucking chilly tonight. I'm going to be shit in my pants. And meanwhile, in their heads, they're like, ooh, I'm ooh time for a bath. Time for a bath. Time to have a good time. Put on some, you know, when I'm done the bath, I'll have to put some latex pants on and just trap it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Trap it so it makes a big bubble and I just feel full in my vagina. Yeah, put some Lulu's on and uh, lock a bubble in. Uh, oh, in another house. piece of that that we have to think that we have to mention is the fact that they said um, that it you feel it more when you have no bush, right? Yeah, when you have bush, it mutes it. Right. Somehow the hair, the hair, it gets diffused in the hair. Well, it's almost like it like seals are now gone, right? I guess so, yeah. I think that's what it is. Oh, the pants will stick to the front of your body. Yeah, that's what it is, I think. If you have no pubic hair, and then and then the fart has to go there. The fart has nowhere to go but the hole. And it so it fills you up. Yeah, so if you got bush, even if you got a little bush, you've now it's like you know. These girls in this video, they're wearing they are wearing tight pants a lot, right? Guaranteed. And they're What woman doesn't wear tight pants? I don't know. When that girl said your pussy lips when she said your pussy lips i was like oh that's that's descriptive that's, that's super sexy nicely descriptive that's super sexy uh, we say tight pants but these days the new trend <laughs> as my wife puts it is so guys these days have to fucking like they want us to fucking yank our pants up with a fucking vice grip because they're so tight and women are now going to baggy pants baggy pants for girls well, what are we at baggy over? and then the the top of the pant is up past the belly button I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I want to wear. My, and my wife says, "Oh, Derek, that's the trend. That's you know." Well, you start wearing MC Hammer pants. Yeah. And you say that's a trend. Yeah. And then she says, "No, it's not, Beaver. I haven't seen anyone wearing MC Hammer pants. What about MC Hammer? You say, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. This you got it one. You got the you got the argument one. Jesus, right there. I hate. Next thing you know, you're wearing MC Hammer pants all around town. You can't touch this. Yeah. No, 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 no. Can't touch this. <laughs> I just, I just hate who, who starts these trends. Like, the, it's easy for a woman to say, "Oh, it's trending." Yeah, who? Yeah. Why don't you start a trend of wearing? You know what? The other thing too is your wife is in your thirties. Thirties yeah. are a difficult time. You want to keep the keep up with the people in their twenties because they're the trendsetters, right? Yeah, they're the height of pop culture. 
because you don't want to admit that you're in your 30s, right? Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I bet you're not, and you're not old like those bitches in their 40s, you know? Right. And then, uh, so you're like, you're, you're hanging on, right? But the reality is, those girls in their 20s are trying to dress different than you. Right. They're trying to do their own thing. They're trying you know? to do their own thing. And they're, you already had your own thing and that you look good and that you think looks good. And you are wearing these pants that you know. Now, now your wife's different. She's in the, her 30s. She didn't go through the time of these horrible pants. Right. My wife did. Right. She's in her 40s. So she's going to. She already wore these pants in the, in the 90s. 90s. Yeah. And uh, they had their time. And they're done. And now when she goes back, she's embarrassed when she would wear those pants too late, you know, because mm-hmm. they're out of fashion. Yeah. See, for right? me, the 90s. And so were... now she feels like she's going back to out of fashion again. So it's difficult. Mm-hmm. All my wife wants to do is wear bell bottoms because that's they came back in the 90s. Right. When yeah, she's going through the say, bell <laughs> bottoms were the were uh, and the flare at the bottom real tight. And then like from like the knee down, it was like baggy flared shit. out. And she loved that look. And if you give that back in fashion, she's going to be right re- loving it. And so she's waiting for it. Yeah. And I'm just like, who gives a shit if it's in fashion? It makes you feel good. Wear it. Go out there and wear that shit, you know? And I, I think it looks good, too, because I remember those days. But then we go out looking like we're two people with mullets stuck in the 90s. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, we're just, like, in a different or time. a pair of Wayne's World wannabes. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you just get stuck and that. You don't want that either. No. But, but God damn it, it, it looked good to me. Right. But back, you know, back, why I'm stuck is because I was fucking awesome then. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and you had not a care in the world. Yeah, it was the best. Fuck it. But back to uh, back to that video. Uh, oh, yeah, I yeah. definitely have never got a fart to go into my dick hole. Well, that is the dumbest question ever. Like that is not even. Oh, you don't get a fart to go in your dick hole. It's got to go out of my ass, around the front, and up and into and a tiny little down hole. The, yeah, down the shaft and back, a tra- change trajectory and go back up the hole. No, no. The most I get is it's flapping around my hemis in the back. <laughs> and you know that does feel all right. <laughs> it, it tickles the fancy, eh? <laughs> yeah, it's better than yeah. better than nothing. Right. And. uh also, I like the the old Hemis give it a little bit of more, um, what do you call it, a tone? The tone? Okay. You, you can make more different notes with it. It's like, you know, it's got more um, vibration. It's got a little musical tint to it is what you're yes. saying. Yes. Oh, okay. Beav, I don't want to be too dirty on this show, but I got to tell you, I took a dump this morning Yeah. that I was just like amazed by. Amazed. Hit personal records? Oh my God. It was enormous. So much. And of course it did first flush. It was like, it didn't like it. Negative. (laughs) So panic mode kicked in. It looked like a whole team of like a whole bus of people shit in an outhouse. (laughs) And it was just me (laughs) in one, one sitting. It was like, Oh my goodness. What did I do? Just huge. Yeah. So you've courtesy flushed and, uh, it did not like, yeah, courtesy flushed because it's coming out of the water. There's so much of it. Right. So then you give it the flush, and then you're like, oh, no, 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 no. Should I flush it again? Yeah. You, I waited, and I'm like, oh, you know, the water's going to break it down. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God the water did break it down. <laughs> Softened her up. I knew there wasn't much paper in there. If you do that with the paper, oh, you're, you're fucked. Fucked. Now you're in big trouble. <laughs> no. But I had, like, very little paper in there. I just had, like, one wipe just to kind of, like... Cause it was like one, like a you sit down and just evacuate, and it's like <laughs> holy mackerel, holy jeez, that just <laughs> it felt like a normal dump. And then you look in there, and you're like, my god, there's so much. Because you have to look. Yeah, you gotta yeah, look. You gotta look. Who doesn't look? Yeah. But I was impressed. I was like, that is so much. Like you want to take a picture and show your friends right. so bad, but there's no friend that appreciates a picture. You know? Oh, the best ever was is my kid. He when the first time he pooped in the toilet. He, he didn't even put the seat down. He just did standing, and he just hovered his butt over the over, oh, yeah. over the porcelain, Asian, Asian style. Yeah, over the <laughs> yeah, exactly over <laughs> the porcelain. And because we were we were building it up, right? Like, come on, you, you like stop stop with the diapers, right? You got to go in the toilet. And we Julie had got him toys. Like he'd been staring at these toys above the toilet. That hey, you're gonna get that toy if you poop in the toilet. So and he was always religious when he pees, like flush the toilet right away. Yeah, you know, goes to the sink, washes hands, yada yada yada. This time, 
he's quiet, quiet. All of a sudden, dad, look, look. And he wouldn't flush A. He's pointing to the toilet. Look. I'm like, oh my God. The thing was fucking two feet, like, or not two. It was like 12 inches long. I'm like, how did this come out of your body? Yeah, yeah. You're like, how did that thing fit in you? And how did he do it standing? Amazing. Amazing. Like he's only, he's only, he's only like three feet tall and he managed to prop his butt over the porcelain and make it all happen. I couldn't believe it. And then, you know, it's funny. He got his, so there's two options of toys, right? One was a little robot. One was a transformer robot. Just throw battery in it, dances around and lights up. So he picked the robot and uh, 10 seconds later, he realized he made a bad decision. It doesn't do much. Yeah. yeah I want the transformer. Well, I'm you like, eat I, more. I'm like, you better start. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, you better uh, just kind of stay here then because you're not getting another toy until you shit in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, it was meltdown city. Oh, man. He just thought he could change, switch it, eh? Because I knew then we were like, if he switches it, he'll never sit on that toilet again. I tell you, once they see that shit come out of them, though, it's like a light bulb goes off. I, I've seen it where, like, if you let your kid go out and they're in that toilet training age and you let them go out with no diaper on and just run around the yard. Yeah. And then they eventually have to go to the bathroom and then they just do it on the yard. Oh, my kid will put a diaper on himself. To go take a shit in. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is crazy. Yeah. And then I'll call him a baby. I'm like, diapers are only for babies. And he's like, I'm not a baby. I'm Ari. I've watched a kid <laughs> shit on the yard. And then you just see him like just amazed that that fact that it happened because they can see it coming out of them. You, right. Most of them put their head between their legs and they're yeah, like, they're "Oh, watching like, it. fuck!" There's a <laughs> shit coming out. Of <laughs> and they never knew. They knew they had the feeling, and they knew that it was stinky and it felt bad, and you know. But they never knew that it was coming out of. It that. was physically exiting their body. Yeah, and then when they feel that they could, then then when they they know like, "Oh, I can do this not in my pants." Mm-hmm. Then they're like, why didn't you guys like just tell me this from the right? <laughs> and you're like, in a parent, as a parent, you're like, I've been fucking saying it since day one. Like, yeah, Jesus, it's kind of the same when they get older, too. Well, I don't understand. And then they'll stand in the corner when they're babies and, and shit standing up. It's like, man, you got to sit down, get the legs up, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like, nothing's better, mm -hmm. like, it's got to hurt standing up. I don't know. The I like your Asian style yeah, philosophy. That squat, though. You got to squat. Oh, you know what? Uh, what's one thing in life that when you, you would never did until you had kids? I can tell you what I do. Now, when I sit on the toilet, I take my kid's little step stool and I stand and I put my feet up on it. Get my feet higher. Yeah, yeah, it's nice. It's like a necessity now. Like I, I, it's a mad panic. Sit down because you're just getting there in time, and it's like, oh, where's the step stool? Yeah, the step stool ends up being a squatty potty. Yeah, they ended up all these podcasts have these like advertisements for squatty potties, and I'm like, oh, well, they're just like a just step kid's stool. step stool. Yeah. So then I started using it to take a dump, and I'm like, yeah, it does fire it out better. It doesn't fires it out way better. I, like, I, get la thing. I get laughed at all the time, but I don't give a shit. My it's, kids are like 19 and 21. And we still got a step stool. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, Jeez. they don't need a step stool. <laughs> yeah. Plus, they're girls. They don't even pee. Like, like standing up. So, like, there's no reason for it. But it uh, except for they put their phone on it. When yeah, I was just going to say, yeah. you put a phone on it and you throw a movie on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a good 45. That's a surefire recipe for hemorrhoids, so, by the way. Oh, yeah, I bet. Watch a movie on the toilet. Oh, my God. My whole insides would come all the way out of me. I'm, I'm 45 minutes. I can't be on the toilet that long. Wait, I wait till usually my legs go numb. You can't do that, man. I know you're not Wait till to. you're exactly ready. Do your business. Get the hell off. Oh, of I'm it. not saying I like I, I do my business, but then I just otherwise I, your I insides wait. are gonna come out. I know <laughs> I know who shit out my fucking yeah, intestines. Your intestines. Yeah, man. They just hang on you can't hold on to those things forever. <laughs> oh, it's so terrible. Getting old sucks, man. I know I don't look like I'm old from the outside, but my insides are fucking old. What generation would you pick? What? If you got to pick a generation to stay at. You know, my wife, she, she's really interested in talking to her old patients. She loves to find out the secret to a long-lasting life. Yeah, what do they say? They always say they're 60s. Really? Yep. Most of them say, if I could go back to any era of my are life. They are they still sexually active? Do they say, does she? They're, I, think, I think the guy, the, they're mostly men, I think, that say the 60s. 60s? But, uh... Like, I was told, uh... uh by an ex that worked at you think a about 60s old, though no work yeah um you're usually financially like set up stable yeah 
and you uh, do whatever still you healthy want. enough to do whatever you want. Yeah. That's why they pick it. Because yeah. the rest of your young life, when you and shit, you can just take fucking pills to get hard on. But I like the hustle. Yeah, I like the thirties, and I like the thirties right now. To be honest with you, uh, me, I'd go twenties, man, before thirties. No responsibility. Because twenties, you can still be a fuck up, and it's okay. And it's okay. You, and you've then, got uh, second chances on everything. But thirties uh, was like, oh, uh, in my life at least, because the decisions I made in my thirties were my busiest time. Oh, no, I'll agree that my 30s have been the busiest by far. Yeah, and then the 40s, it started to kind of, I don't know, you kind of just got to get into the rhythm of it. It's I more guess. of emotion then, yeah. But um, 30s was like, you're just fucking, you didn't have time to think, man. You're just working all the time. Yeah, like no, so you're crazy. right. I'm not going to lie, but and then uh, I just think physically, like I'm more where I want to be now. Yeah, I am too. Than, than I was when I was in my 20s. Me too. Like I was a walking around, like you're, you walk around with a heart on all day long. Like yeah. Your I, body is still changing a little bit on the latter end. And yeah, I mean, I, I think, uh, not literally, but you know what I mean? You're fucking, your head's going a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. Well, I was banking, so I was fat and I was like stagnant. I didn't move around. Oh, okay. So then you're like, uh, I'm, uh, I was just in pain all the time. See, like I, I, I heard some guys, one comedian was talking about this the other day. He's like, in the twenties, it's like I will go anywhere. Mm. If Buddy calls you up, let, let's go. It's like, all right, I don't even care where we're going. Yeah, yeah. Thirties, it's like, yeah, where are we going? And then, yeah, you qualify it. Yeah, and then forties are like, no, better I'm not be going. Fucking good, yeah. You know, better be good. Yeah, better be good. Yeah. Yeah, you just get a little more selective. Yeah. Your time becomes more valuable as you get older. Like, you're just like, ah, I don't have as much of it left. I'm not going to fuck around with, like, like things I don't want to do. Right. And I, I don't know. I think sometimes that's counterproductive, though, because when you do things you don't want to do, you get somewhere. Well, I find, I find every time my wife uh, has to not force, but, like, coerce me to do something that I'm not necessarily right away on board to do, it turns out to be fun every time. Yeah, it always is. Or an adventure or, you know what I mean? It, anything it leads that, to something else. Anything that takes you out of your comfort zone, you're yeah. like, yeah, this is this is good, man. This is better than it. Than, right. Than, because you like, because you grow, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I don't understand how people always, in the today's world, especially with social media, they want everything to be like good or bad you know it's either black or white right. it's like it's like binary there's like two choices you're on my side or their side you're for me or you're against me and uh i just people wanna, are just middle. just rule out the other the other opinion you're right and then but the other opinion is what makes you grow like if you're mad about something like if you disagree about something mm -hmm. and you feel so strongly about it that makes you mad the only reason it makes you mad is because there's somebody on the other side that's as angry about you feeling the way you do. Right. And if no one felt the way you do, then no one gives a fucking shit. Then it's, right. Like if, if, if someone makes a stance, all humans should uh, be able to breathe air. You know, who's going to disagree with that? Nobody. Right. So there's no point in getting upset about that. Exactly. Point, right? yeah, it's just like water. Yeah. Everybody should have access to water in the world. It's like, man, that's a statement that has no answer. Right. And I think if you're on the side where you can't see the other person's side, then uh, you're a problem too. Right. Yeah. And then bo both know, of you guys are wrong. I know, most somebody, like, I know somebody like that. that is it, like, like just random opinions of useless and useless facts of, of with no answers. Yeah, and if you disagree, you're just Wait, like, you're, you're just bad, you know? Yeah. And you're like, well, what's your opinion based on? Well, I heard it from random sources and no evidence or whatever. And then I'm like, well, then, you know, like, I would just, like, I think if some more people, instead of being offended by someone's opinion, I asked, why do you think that? Mm -hmm. You know, just why? And then they listen and then... You know, you don't have to agree, but just like hear the person out. Maybe you'll have a better understanding of somebody else. You know, like is it that person's not necessarily evil because they think differently right. than you. And I don't understand because everyone's got people like this in their family. 
Like they got people, you got people in your family that think differently than you. Oh, fuck yeah. But you love them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, you just know they, they have a different way of looking at the world than you do, but you still love them. They're still good people right. and all that. They just have different way of looking at things than you and you disagree with them. But it's not like they're evil or, or on the wrong side of things. Like they're not like a bad person just because they have a few fucked up uh, ideas, you know, like, uh, I, I, that's my opinion. At least like most people have to put up with the, with the dumb ideas of their family or something or their friends because they have a history, but like for a stranger, they're like, they won't tolerate it at all. Or from the general public, it's like, if you're not, you're not thinking like me, you're like, a, you're like evil. True. And I don't think that's right. Cause like, most of the people are probably decent, you know, like probably you get along with them if you met them face to face and, and give them a chance. Yeah. Give them yeah, a yeah. chance. You see, they're not just, yeah. they're not just those stupid canned opinions that you right. get stuck it's, on. If people's first shot at is the first thing they want to do is yeah, disagree. Yeah. And most of that shit's all bullshit too. It's like oh, getting yeah. upset about something that doesn't matter. It doesn't affect them. It doesn't like it means really nothing. It means nothing. It doesn't, you can get on with your, what you need to do to survive and, uh, help the people around you without it ever coming up, you know? And yet they make it their whole fucking identity. You want to do one more before we go? Yeah. One more. One, one more. This is one. the last one. You spinner beef. Oh, yeah. No, we already did that one. Oh, it just keeps going to fire in your pussy. Wait, think less? Think less or... No, boob size by country. Boob Let's do boob by... size. That's a good one, Dan. Boob size by country. This is, of course... So, I went on the online. I found out... It's not as easy as you think. It's not like this country's got, like, this size boob. And right. That, I don't know how... That'd be a tough search because, yeah, it's... So, all... it goes by cup size. Average. Yeah, average cup size for country. And... um so there's two countries tied for number one. Oh, so I'm going to say Brazil is one of them. They're definitely top three. I'll tell you, Brazil. Okay, the top, the average cup size for the for the number one, which is two countries are tied with, is C. Okay, and um, there's two countries as I said, and Brazil. Uh, yeah, they are not in the running. They're not in the top 10. Jeez, I wasn't even close. Okay. Uh, number one. Now, this includes, this is bra size. It's based on bra, bra size. size. Portugal. So, it's like if you got augmentation, let's say. Yeah. You would then still need a bra to, to fit yeah. over your huge tits. You're right. So, I would think this these two countries that are in the top. America, probably would, well, then, is U.S. in the top? Yeah, U.S. number one. Oh, yeah, because they're more fake tits. Than more they're... fake tits than real tits, yeah. yeah. And then uh, who would be the second country probably have the most fakers? Can't be Canada. No, not Canada. No, it'd be uh, it'd be like uh, it'd be out in Europe. There's uh, be Britain. Yep, UK, UK. Yeah. You got them. Those are the two biggest ones, and I think it is because of that. It's got to be, man. They're, they definitely up a whole cup because of because of fake titties. Yeah, I would say so. You know what I found out about fake titties the other day? What? They had a big recall not too long ago. Apparently, people were fucking like they had a bad the silicone was fucking. Oh, it leaks into your body. Yeah. That gets you sick. I didn't know that they, they required maintenance. Like I thought it was a one and done deal. Oh yeah, not those silicon ones, man. Yeah, it take every so many years. You got to get a little. You got to get a. Yeah, you got to get back. a. You got to get a two point oh. Yeah, I don't know, man. Uh, this next group of countries, they they tie in BC. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of them. There's six countries. I would say we're starting to get some natural titties here. Some real tit countries. Some natural ones. And then, uh, but there's still a couple of fake of ones are, that are affected by fakers. Okay, are we? Is there a Caribbean country in there? Top five? Negative. Oh, then there got to be. A, it's got to be a fake scenario. We're all, um, I would say, European and uh, North American. Okay. So we're looking for number three. Uh, well, just anything in the second group. And yeah, group. Uh, Canada's in there. Canada is in there. I think also we we're probably swayed due to a fake. Fa well, yeah, there's probably like, but not as many. No, that's why we're in the second group. Yeah. Plastic surgery isn't exactly a major thing in Canada. 
But I'll say this next group. Bot- Botox, maybe. Russia. Oh, yeah, Russians. Colombia. Uh, Shakira, Shakira. Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't know if she's got big tits, though. She's got a big ass. Yeah, but what is their next group? The B Cup? Poland, Canada, Netherlands. Hup Holland. Hup. Uh, and Denmark. Never, that's, that's the next group. Never met a Dutch woman with a small set. And then the ne- then the B group, I think I got Australia, Hungary, Ireland. Oh, they were still C, that other group? They were B and BC. BC? Like, okay. Yeah. Now, smallest boobs. Yeah, smallest uh, Asian. Um, the number one smallest boob country is actually... Um, Bahamas, really? The Bahamas. Yeah, they're they're all slender people, probably. but they are in the same group with mostly African and Asian countries. Yeah, because over so there, Gambia, over Mongolia, there, they torture people, and the next thing they're cut off and shit. Gambia, Mongolia, which is a horrible thing, but that's what they do over there. They cut arms off and titties. titties? Off. They cut titties. I off? don't know. Maybe I don't know if they do that, but I think it's just uh, or maybe all the people with big tits don't buy bras. Oh yeah, you're right. No bra, like uh, like I I was thinking Bahamas, man. They probably no bra. Like if you had to say from the girls that you met in your life, yeah, who's got the biggest tits? Like what what nationality of girls have the biggest Dutch? Really? Yep. Oh, I'd go Greek. Yeah, Greeks up there, way up there. You're right. Every Greek girl I met's got huge tits, and it's like. Uh, but they were like way below us on the list. In your head, I don't want you to say it aloud, but in your head, can you think of a Dutch woman that has small tits? There's a lot of big titted Dutch women. Yeah, I can't think of any. Oh, small titted Dutch woman? Yeah, I can't think of any. Other than on TV that you see like the like the 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 speed skaters in the Olympics from the Netherlands. Yeah. Because they got to be sleek, right? Yeah, but they're strapped down, too. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they got, like, fucking, they got the, the suit on. But you're right. Can't, uh, Holland, they do have big, big milkers, usually. You're right. Yeah. But, like you said, the the, 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 the skewed part of the data is the free birds. Yeah, the free birds will definitely let you go. And also, what I was thinking of with Greeks. Yeah. It's like, what if the reason that there's so many smaller bra sizes is because they have to buy a lot of uh, small size bras for their e- children? Yes, because they're maturing. Because when they're like eight years old, they have yeah. an A cup. And then when they're nine years Which old, they have a B gonna cup. Which is going to skew the data, too. They all skew the data, yeah. you know? And then they all got double D at the end. But yeah. then they're like, who gives a shit? I'll just tuck them into my belt line because uh, no one's looking at my tits anymore. Right. Or whatever, I'll just let these fuckers swing. Swing and swing. Big droopy swingers. So ladies and gentlemen. What if you had big if you have big, huge titties beef? You wake yeah. up tomorrow morning with big huge titties, like huge and they're just and they're low and, 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 they're, and they're slow and swinging? Yeah. Like I, you, you gonna wear something or are you just gonna let those I'd go get swing? surgery and tighten them bad boys up. Surgery, eh? Tighten them up. You don't wanna be I don't want them fake, I just would tighten them up. If you came in here, nothing against fake ones. I if you think. came in here with big tits, like next week, yeah. Like all of a sudden, this happened, and then you walk in here with those big tits. I try not to even bring it up, to be honest. Really, you 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 would you would keep it. You would accept my decision, and you would uh, try to avoid the elephant in the room. Yeah, because if I start talking about it, I'm just going to ask if I can have a suck on them. And I'm not going to want to do You cup that. a field too, yeah? Not to a friend of mine. I'm not going to want to go there. So I'm just going to try not to look. I'm going to look at Do what I do to girlfriends of mine who have big boobs is I try to look at you from the chin up. Chin up. And I don't even acknowledge the fact that you have orifices or anything. Or You boobs. don't allow your mind to wander. No, I do that with all my girlfriends. That's why I'm a good guy friend. Mm-hmm. I rule out the fact that... The whole like that they don't that they have a body. Yeah. Well, speaking of bodies, ladies and gentlemen that are watching on YouTube, you'll notice something different in the video. You'll notice that me and Pete don't have hats on. We are free burden the no hat. They were beautiful. We're we're flowing, even though I got my hair's like an inch long. But wait till you see Beaver uh, at the end of harvest. His hair is going to be, we'll hopefully get a picture as you compare it to the Oh, one. yeah, I will. It'll be exactly opposite. Of exactly the, opposite. I want to do <laughs> I want to do it before and after. Yeah, you got to. Right? The first yeah. day of harvest, last day of harvest. Touch my shoulders and it'll be fucking, uh, I'll look like uh, Kramer. 
<laughs> yeah. I said that one time I saw you, I was like, what happened to Beaver? Yeah. I you're was, all ripped too. And you're like, uh, but you were. <laughs> oh, I was halfway between Kramer and uh, Jim Carrey off Ace Ventura. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was wild. It man. was wild, man. The stuff you go through for a living, it's crazy. Man. Yeah. It's like, we, yeah, we just go. That's all. Uh, I'll be just coming out of hell at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, everybody, that's our show. We didn't even talk about our sponsors, Clean Flow, or the way you can support our show on Patreon, because me and Beaver are having such a good time yeah. talking. But you know you can go to Patreon. You know you can support our sponsor, Clean Flow. You know you can give us a little bit of a feedback at, at the Dutch Hall, gmail.com, or you can... Uh, uh, what do you call us? Hit us. What do you call us in our DMs? Slip into our DMs. Slip into our DMs. On Instagram please. at, at the Chaw. And I want to give a little shout out to Emil Van Steeg. Beaver last week called you Eves Van Steeg. Oh, shit. You mixed up my cousin and you. And I'll tell you, because you're a Diamond Club listener and we'll never I do apologize. that again. I apologize. I did say Eves. I know I know yeah. exactly when I said it. You said Eves Van Steeg. And I was like, this is a Diamond Club, man. Yeah. We respect this I, guy. I apologize, buddy. Anyways, uh, really sorry. Thanks a lot, everyone that's listening. Hey, uh, slip, tell down your, slip down to your local automotive shop and get some clean flow products. Lube up your life, people. Yeah, Until next week, we'll see you in T. Bust see a nut. You next Thursday. Hit it, buddy. <laughs>